Some observers have expressed the concern that by expanding its balance sheet, the Federal Reserve will ultimately stoke inflation. The Fed's lending activities have indeed resulted in a large increase in the reserves held by banks and thus in the narrowest definition of the money supply, the monetary base. However, banks are choosing to leave the great bulk of their excess reserves idle, in most cases on deposit with the Fed. Consequently, the rates of growth of broader monetary aggregates, such as M1 and M2, have been much slower than that of the monetary base. At this point, with global economic activity weak and commodity prices at low levels, we see little risk of unacceptably high inflation in the near term. And indeed, we expect inflation to be quite low for some time. Before Barack Obama leaves office, there will be a currency crisis. The U.S. dollar will collapse, and prices in this country for consumer goods are going to go ballistic, and so will interest rates. And we're going to be living in an economy with unemployment closing at on 20 percent and double-digit inflation yeah. and double-digit interest rates. This is economic ruin that is coming, and it's because of the very policies that, 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 you're, that you're wanting Barack Obama uh, to, to, uh, to pursue. In the past few years, there's been a big debate in economic and policy circles. Do we need more austerity or more growth, more stimulus? In the past couple of weeks, a lot of people on the growth side of the equation have claimed victory. Joining me now is Larry Kudlow. He's host of the Kudlow Report on CNBC, which is our premier partner here at Yahoo Finance. Uh, Larry, I know you have some strong opinions about this. So you had Reinhardt and Rogoff. Their report got uh, shown to be, have some errors in it. The EU saying maybe Australia isn't such a great idea. Do you think this is going to trickle down to U.S. policy? Uh, look, I, th th let's define terms, just first of all. Okay. I am for government austerity. Uh -huh. right? I, right. I, I believe that a smaller government with budget cuts is pro-growth. It gives the private sector room to breathe and invest and create jobs. So I think any time you cut government spending, as in sequester, so which we're doing right it's now, it's a right? tax cut. Yeah. And I think that's one of the reasons why the stock market has done so well. It absolutely loves it, and I think our economy is going to improve. I also want prosperity in the private sector. So I don't want to see you cutting back in the pr private sector. Should have, for example, pro-growth tax reform. Uh, we're seeing a little bit of that in Europe right now. That's true. And it's interesting, and, and during the campaign, maybe the one thing that uh, President Obama and Mitt Romney agreed on was corporate tax reform. Sometimes, yes. And I haven't seen anything about it since no, the election. No follow-through. No follow-through. And unfortunately now, with all these scandals and whatnot, I'm not that optimistic. But you're quite right. I can't think of anything that would help the private sector better than uh, pro-growth business tax reform for both large and small businesses. And I want to say one other thing. This may surprise you. Um, I love what they're doing in Japan. You do? I do. The monetary part of Japan, they were going into heavy deflation. They had to open up the monetary spigots. They had to let the currency adjust, which I call normalization. And look, they just produced a pretty good GDP, 3.5% three three percent percent in Q1. Right. I don't know whether that's permanent or not. Europe should do what Japan is doing on money. Europe is way too tight, the ECB. They should open up the spigots, cut their interest rates, and pour money-based money into their economy. Europe is in deep danger of deflation right now. And mea culpa, mea culpa for me, Ben Bernanke was right. He put the money in, and those of us who expected inflation were wrong. I was wrong. I've admitted this on the air. I wrote a column about it. Larry Kudlow, <laughs> that's the headline. Be a cult, but Ben Bernanke I'm was right. You, I yes. give this round to Bernanke, and I think the U.S., we're not growing big, but we're going to keep the 2%, maybe 2.5% growth rate. Get us business tax cuts. That's what I want. Okay. To him, David calling in from Kansas City, Missouri. David, how you doing? Hi, Peter. Hey, I don't know. Monday, this was posted on one of your competitors' website as an interview uh, by Le of Larry Kudlow by uh, uh, Yahoo Finance Daily Ticker Show. I don't know if you're familiar with that. But yeah, I've been on the Daily Ticker many times. Go ahead. Yeah, he actually he said, this is my mea culpa. He said, everything I criticize Ben Bernanke for is wrong. Ben Bernanke has won this fight. He said, the biggest problem in Europe is that the Europeans need to adopt a Japanese model, Abenomics, I guess. He was basically just spilling his guts in favor of every Keynesian remedy that you could possibly come up with. I mean, next time you see him, you should never never let him forget this interview. I mean, you, you need to go check this interview out because... Well, he's been he's, saying he's, that on his show. He's been saying that on his show. Uh, yeah, he's had a major capitulation. 
I, I, I think, you know, I mean, he's, you know, he's now drunk to Kool-Aid. And I don't know what happened to him, uh, but he's going to eat these words. Uh, but often the way Larry Kudlow works is he, he just conveniently forgets what he says in the past when he's wrong and just pretends he was right all along. Because I remember Larry Kudlow uh, for years uh, was referring to the U.S. economy as Goldilocks. Uh, everything was great. Uh, as the housing bubble was in, was was inflating, and when I would come on and criticize it, you know they would all argue with me, uh, and you know and and then you know when it, when when that when the when the bubble burst and and all of a sudden the Goldilocks illusion went away. I mean I I you know I, I always said it wasn't it wasn't I, I always tried to remind him, hey, what happens at the end of Goldilocks? You know the the the, ba the bears come home, uh, you know, <laughs> um, but um, after after. Um, um, the bursting, he was there, shock and awe, we need, we need QE, so he was all in favor of it, and then he was against it, now he's in favor of it again. Uh, so he changes his mind with the wind. That's unfortunate. I wish he was a more, a more consistent voice uh, for free market prosperity, which is what he claims to be in favor of. There's nothing free market about what uh, the Bank of Japan is doing. There's nothing free market about what the Fed is doing. Uh, so he's not a free market guy. He's a big government guy. Uh, and, you know, he, you know, he's come out of the closet, I guess. But, you know, we'll see what happens if he does, if he does it in reverse because he's finally bought bought onto it right before I think it, the whole thing is going to fall apart. The wheels are about to come off the wagon uh, just as uh, David Kudlow, I mean, Larry Kudlow is climbing on board. Uh, but hey, thank you. Planning. Hey, Bernanke, uh, how can the American public trust you when you engineered and kept secret the largest bailout in the history of the world? Let uh, go of my mic. Don't grab, don't grab my mic. You engineered the largest crisis. Sir, we're not answering questions. Sir, we're not answering questions now. Is this a question? We're not answering questions now. I'm just asking sir. a question. We're not Why? Questions. I'm not a dog. Well, what about Bilderberg? You want to talk about that? Excuse me? Uh, thank you. But you don't have to put your hands on me. I, I'm listening. I'm listening. How did you get in here? What do you mean? 